child. This is Rel Jackson, and I'm a brand ambassador for Magical Pose. Magical Pose is a clothing line for men, women, and most teens. You can find them on Instagram, Magical Pose, M-A-G-I-C-A-L-P-O-S-E. You can find them online at MagicalPose.com, M-A-G-I-C-A-L-P-O-S-E.com. And you can even Google search Magical Pose Apparel and find their website that way. Now, due to COVID, you may experience some shipping delays from 7 to 14 days. Be advised, our all orders will be shipped within 3 to 5 days after processing. Your, your first email is with the confirmation and receipt. Your second email is when it's shipped with tracking information. Free shipping on all orders, $150 or more. No promo code needed. Feel free and check out their catalog. They have things ranging from women's body con dresses, candy painted women's twist front tanks, zipper pouch, jackets, backpacks, crop top windbreakers, t-shirts, hoodies. And if you want a discount with the Magical Poles because you're with Rel Jackson, use discount code MPREL333. M-P-R-E-L-333. Thank you for shopping with Magical Poles. I hope you like what you get. Feel free. Hit me back. Let me know what you think. And I will see you guys later. Bye. Hey, baby. This is Rob. Welcome to the back of the classroom. Today's topic of conversation is don't make situations worse. And sort of by a quote, one of my one of my favorite, my favorite hip hop artists who passed away, DMX. And his famous quote was to live is to suffer, but to survive well, that's to find the meaning in the suffering. And something we all know, life is hard. It's not going to be easy. Nothing about life is easy. Even if you was handed things throughout your life, at some point, the person who's handing you things will no longer be there. And you'll have to find out how to do things on your own. So what do you do? How do you... That's when your suffering begins. And were you given a due justice by everything being handed to you? Sure, it made things easier while you was getting it. But that's more like a shield. You were in a bubble. And that bubble, you was protected from what the world is really like, the outside elements. And you don't know how to survive in the in that world, in that temperament. In the world that which is outside of your bubble. So then what do you do? How do you survive in an atmosphere you were shielded from and kept from? In which case, my first uh, my advice, my opinion would be to start from the ground up. Self maintenance. What are the things you need to do to make sure you're good, right? So you want to go see a doctor. Make sure you're healthy. See a nutritionist. Find out what foods you should eat, diet you should be on. And diet is just a lifestyle and choices of foods you choose to eat. It's not temporary. It's where you want to go with how you want to sustain yourself. Maintenance. You want to see a dentist. Make sure your teeth are good. You want to eat. It's the way you eat and absorb nutrients. Then you'd want to see a therapist. There is to make sure mentally you're where you need to be of sound mind, judgment, so you can trust your own decisions in life and also while you're talking to other people. And then you learn habits. Your dentist is going to tell you how to brush your teeth, oral hygiene. Your doctor is going to tell you how to maintain your body. Nutrition will tell you what to eat. So boom, you've got an education from professionals as far as self-maintenance. Then you have education. You have to do a mental development. So you want to make sure you take school serious. And although school can be boring, you also have to understand that's part of life. You have to educate yourself on how things work in the world. And 
No one's just going to give this information to you as an adult. A lot of times you hear the phrase, the game is sold, it's not sold, which means you're going to pay for your education one way or another. And then that comes to the point where you have free education compared to private schools, charter schools, and things of that nature, in which case, as a parent, would look into what they can provide the best source of information for their child. As a child, you have to understand free school might not have all the, uh, how would you call it, the advantages of private school. Some it isn't interchangeable. Some private schools might not have certain advantages of preschool, and free schools might not have the same advantages of private school. But life has taught me that I would like to share with you guys. It doesn't matter whether you have, which advantages you have, you still have time. And although that time is limited, you can personally look into things and get information and learn it on your own. There's YouTube, there's podcasts. There are people having these conversations outside of your home that can educate you and give you a better sense of direction, a better sense of know-how when it comes to things in life that you might want to learn, figure out, and just be more well-versed in. You can learn another language online if you wanted to, just so you can be more proficient and efficient in things that you want to do in life. Then all of those things, one way or another is responsibility. And then there goes the suffering. There goes the struggle. There goes something about you that doesn't come easy, but you still have to push through it. You still have to learn it. You still have to figure it out. And without having guidance, a mentor, somebody who can help you understand why you need to push forward, you won't. And believe it or not, all through life, you've persevered. You pushed forward. We go a little deeper. Our baby's born. There's sex. And there's sperm that goes to the egg. Of all the sperm cells that went toward the egg, only one made it. That was the first race. That was the first competition. You persevered as a sperm cell to get to that egg. You got through the sperm cell. Got into the egg, the egg cell closed down, only one person. So think of it like uh, Transformers or Voltron, like Power Rangers. When you get into your shell, you start to form. You won that race. You persevered. You went, you struggled, you made it. So why stop there? Push forward. Keep going. Don't stop because... There's more to life than just being a person. You want to educate yourself. You want to endure the struggle because what comes after that is your sense of accomplishment. And that's your purpose in life. Is every day supposed to be a struggle? Do you go to work seven days a week and just work, 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 work? I would hope not. I would hope you take the time to smell the roses. Right, Because you worked for something. You didn't just work just so you can have a roof over your head and food in your belly. right? That's not life. You want to have some experiences. You want to enjoy family. You want to bond and build relationships. You want to have an understanding of not just you, but the people around you. right? All too often I hear people go, oh, I don't like people. Get the time to know them. Get the time to figure them out. Because you'll come to an understanding everybody's different everybody grew up differently they seen things differently and just having that understanding of who people are especially the people that you're around it gives you a better understanding of wow you know what? i kind of like the way that you think and i like the way you know we can build off one another and we can come together and we can achieve a common goal and we can work together to build something and then you start to realize it's not people you didn't like it was your uncomfortability with being around people and not knowing how to insert yourself and be assertive and know how to be part of the collective. 
everybody's having a good time and you're socially awkward. Now, the times that we're in now, it's even harder for kids because they're they're not around a bunch of people. So they don't know how to be that way. So we have to, uh, as older, mature people, put them in situations where we educate them, we teach them, we get them comfortable with being in different places and talking to different people and having that understanding. And then when they overcome that, because that's their own struggle and everybody has their own, they'll feel accomplished. Oh, wow, I made a new friend. See, you feel good, right? So don't fear struggle. Don't fear opposition. Look forward to overcoming those obstacles. Look forward to overcoming those oppositions. This way you can feel better within yourself. You can feel good about yourself and you can feel good about what it is that you accomplished. Unforeseen, unforeseen things happen in life. Right? Let's say there was a war. We haven't had one in a while, but when it comes to having good times, you can plan a year, two, three, four years in advance, right? You go on a job interview, what's your five-year plan? You can talk about it. You get into a relationship. You can have a five-year plan. Things are good. But when you're having problems at your job, what is the first thing that happens? Oh, here I go, getting fired. Where's your five-year plan then? Where's it at? Where's your one-year plan? Did you not foresee issues and circumstances beyond your control? Are you willing to just give up or are you willing to find ways to overcome those obstacles? So again, life isn't easy. Relationships aren't easy. You get into a relationship, brothers, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, mother, father, um, friends, husband, wife. Everybody goes through situations. Unforeseen situations always come around. Are you willing? Are you prepared? to follow through, to have those one, two, three, four, five-year plans and overcome those obstacles in order to reach your goal. Plan for the unexpected. Plan for bad things to happen. They always say in times of war, plan for peace. And during times of peace, plan for war. Because during hard times, it's very hard to look beyond the horizon. You're more so focused on what's going on right here in front of you. And you don't have to drag it out. You don't have to be all beat down and just depressed about the situation you're in. It's part of life. It's a sufferer. It's part of the obstacles that you have in life that we are fully aware we can overcome. There's plenty of things we've gone through in life and said, dang, this is crazy. I don't know how I'm going to make it. Look back at those times and look at where you're at now. You made it. Sure, things can be hard. And although... Your vision isn't as far as it was when things are good. That's okay. You can stop. You can focus on what's right there in front of you. Overcome those obstacles and come out on top. Sometimes we got to humble ourselves and understand a lot of these situations are beyond our control. We can't take on so much. And even during those hard times, what do you have around you? Friends, family, people around you who genuinely care about you. And then sometimes you really do have to just stop and smell the roses. Your life is not the accumulation of hard times and struggle. It's just part of the process. You sleep eight hours a day, or hopefully you can get some sleep close to eight hours a day. But That's not a struggle. When you're sleeping, your body gets to relax. Your body resets. You get to have a moment to yourself where you just power down. Right? That's not a struggle. That's actually something that benefits you. So don't not put yourself first. Don't allow the struggle to overcome you. And then once you get some sleep, take some time to yourself and discuss what's going on. Have a mentor, have a doctor, have a therapist, have people around you. Your peers, older mentors, and even people older than them. Some people got your parents, some people you got your grandparents. Reach out to them, talk to them, see what they information they can give you. Although everyone is different, everybody can tell you something different. And when you start to hear the same things over and over again, then that's a possibility that what you're going through is common. You're not the only one. And you can find some type of calm in knowing if these people that's giving you this information is still here today, it's not that bad. Or it's not as bad as you think. Sometimes our own... 
personality and the way that we think and our imagination can get carried away. Now, your imagination can carry it away, become something that works against you, right? But if you can focus on a positive, keep positive people around you, family, friends, uh, people who genuinely care about you, and you can turn around and go, hey, I got this issue, and I need to pick your brain about it. Like, you know, it's really getting to me. And do it earlier in the day. This way you can process the information, and this way when it's time to go to sleep, it's not still on your mind. You can actually get a peaceful night's rest. And you can wake up the next day and you can overcome those obstacles, right? Because who wants to deal with an issue late at night and now you're processing it and you can't sleep comfortably. And you can't sleep comfortably you wake up grumpy. You wake up grumpy and you got to deal with the obstacles and work and school and all these other things that you have in your life you have to contest with. And you didn't really get a good night's sleep. You don't feel too great. Your mood is conflicting with the direction you want to go in life. All of that, we can change. It's a personal choice we have. We can change the environment that we're in. We can change the people we associate with. We can change our demographics simply by understanding who we are, what we're going through, and what we want, and surround ourselves with the people who are in tune and of like mind. If I want to learn something I don't know, I'll find somebody who knows how to do it. I didn't know how to ride a motorcycle. I went to a school that was willing to teach. One of the prerequisites or one of the things that they required me to have before the classes, knowing how to ride a bicycle, which I knew how, and a learner's permit, which I understood I needed one in order to learn and be on a motorcycle. So I already had those things. It was easy to sign up, but that comes with know-how. But if you don't know, you always reach out to the school and you reach out to people and you get information and they'll give you information and you can get yourself aligned with what you need to start. And then once you start, you take it serious. You study. You practice. You give yourself the time you need to get those things in order. And then you go in fully aware, getting enough sleep, what you need to do, how you need to do it. Go over the coursework before you start. Read ahead when you go home. Take personal interest in what it is you're trying to do. And you will overcome your obstacles with rather ease. And some things might take you a little bit longer but that's why you practice and that's why you take it upon yourself to get the fundamentals down and you just keep putting in the work you keep practicing you keep practicing you keep practicing and although perfection is not a man-made thing we can get close we can get better and better and better even with driving you just keep practicing you get better parallel parking it hurts a lot of people it's something that takes a lot of time but you can learn, you can practice, and you can keep getting better and better and better. If you got to go outside and take your car to a parking spot and put it into the same parking spot 10 times just so you can get it down packed, take the time. Figure it out. If you want to play a sport and you want to get a certain move or technique down, you have to keep practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing. That's that's how you get better. Now, in other people's eyes, it might be perfect because you took the time to figure it out. And that's you looking at hard times and struggle and you taking it out and you figuring it out. And then when you overcome those obstacles, when it's time to perform, when it's time to take that test, when it's time to get that job, when it's time to get your diploma, when it's time for you to get a, a pay raise at your job or you are going to get a promotion, it's because you put in the work and the reward is overcoming the struggle, is overcoming the suffer, because you put in that time and energy. You made it work for you. And every so often, stop and smell the roses. Everything can't be work, 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 work. Struggle, 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 struggle. No. You got to get eight hours of sleep. Allow your brain time to power down. Relax. Take it easy. You wake up in the morning. Don't wake up with having to jump up and rush to work or jump up and rush to school. That's too much pressure you're putting on yourself. Wake up with enough time to stop, relax, breathe, right? Exercise, stretch, check the weather, right? Read the news, see what's going on with your family. If it's early enough, you can reach out, text messages to family, send emails. Allow yourself to wake up. Allow yourself to be fully alert. And then by a certain time, 
Give yourself enough time to get to school or work or to wherever you're going with enough time for in case something happens, you're not running late. And it's okay to get places early because even then you can still take time to process your thoughts. Get a cup of coffee or hot chocolate or whatever it is that you like, a beverage of choice, something to eat. Give yourself some nutrients, right? I prefer fruit first thing in the morning. It helps you just overall natural sugar, gives you energy, wakes you up. It's good, it's refreshing, and it just helps. Although your day might be hard, it doesn't mean your entire day has to be hard. Whether it's eight hours or six hours at work or school, it's only six to eight hours. Unforeseen occurrences can be health, you know, and although these things can hinder you in some things, it doesn't have to overwhelm you. It doesn't have to be something that's constantly on your mind and what's something you have to constantly just focus on. Listen, take some time and speak to family and friends. A lot of the hardest times I've gone through, I've actually had friends come around and we talk and we'll laugh and just taking my mind off of the struggle, even if it was for an hour, it helps. It definitely helps. And then I would exercise and then eat something. And even then, that's not focusing on the struggle. It's just something that I just have to go through but I'm willing to go through it. But I took the time to spend time with family, spend time with friends, eat a good meal, improve on my body, improve on just making sure I'm overall as good as I can be. And that's ongoing maintenance. And then you keep building those relationships with friends and family and you realize you build an empire, right? A network of people, your village. And everyone's helping one another And where everyone's benefiting one another. And your struggle, you come to find out, isn't as bad as it could be had you not set yourself up in a manner to have those things with you and for you. So if you don't stop and smell the roses, you're not enjoying life. And then you're overwhelmed with the struggle. Take time to yourself. Go to a museum. Go see family. Go educate yourself on something. Bring more to who you are than just the things that you go through just for survival. You can find a lot of pleasure in just uplifting yourself in culture and in history, science and math. Like all the things you went through in school, every, most of your subjects, your core subjects, they correlate with one another. English class helps you learn to read, right? So you learn history so you can learn what mistakes and things that has happened before so you don't make the same mistakes. And then you learn on what worked so you can learn how you should or could or should do things in order that you can have the quality of life that you want. It's not just the history in school. It also it teaches you how to do the background and the looking into things. And then you can do that with family and friends, right? Math. Math helps you put things together. Same way you could do with, let's say, a cookbook. Measurements. That's like science. That's part of math. One part this, two part that. Math is in science. Science is part of reading because you got to read what you have to use and how it all goes together. So that's your math. Your language arts is your English. Your history, which is you learning to do research and figure things out and know what works and what doesn't work. So although you see different subjects as different, they all still come together when it comes to life. Your algebra, it might be not something you like, but when I say plan for the unexpected, that's an X variable in math that they tell you it's the unknown. So it's part of time and distance and travel and going places and doing things. It's part of the struggle as well. Things can go wrong all the time, but if you plan for it, if you know it's there, you don't ignore it. It's something that you can make sure you can work around and you can overcome. And then when you overcome those obstacles, you can feel good about yourself. You can leave the house 30 minutes early just so you can get to work 30 minutes early and then take a time to yourself. But God forbid you catch a flat tire or the trains are delayed or you can't catch a cab and then you get to work at the nick of time. Had you waited and you had those same obstacles, you'd have been late. But well, because you chose to take a proactive response to things and look at life and understand this struggle and there's things you want to overcome, you can have a more fulfilling life because you chose to not ignore it 
and you didn't choose to wait till the last minute. You chose to be more of a proactive and be on top of those things so you can overcome. And then when you realize you're getting all the things that you want because you take the personal time to see how your life is structured, make improvements where you need to, and, you know, a little buffer, shine the areas that, you know, you might be getting a little dull on and continue to get better at the things you're great at. And you'll see that things come together for you a lot better, right? Don't take anything for granted because then you're leaving something behind and you're choosing to ignore something. And the things that you ignore, it can grow to be, uh, it can grow into a snowball effect because you're ignoring it and it can grow out of control. And then you'll feel like, oh, you're under this great pressure. Listen, let's stop. Let's take time. Let's really address what it is. We don't have to make it an all day conversation. We can make it 30 minutes to an hour. Just write everything down. What's going on? What have I gone through? And 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 work your way up till today. And then take a nice deep dive into what can I do better? Right? Is my health an issue? What do I need to change in how I eat? What do I need to change in my exercise? What do I need to change in my lifestyle? Work. Do I need to leave the house a little bit earlier? Is my relationship with my family and my friends as good as it can be? Do I need to reach out to people? Do I need to see who's around me that's negative and who needs to be around me that's positive? What can I learn? What can I take from other people to improve my quality of life? Part of having a positive outlook is focusing on solutions. Yes, we can acknowledge the negative and the things that are going wrong, but we got to focus on the positive because what you speak into your universe, the things that you focus on becomes the thing that you're more going toward. I learned when riding a motorcycle, if you see a pothole, don't focus on a pothole. Focus on the route you want to take. Because if you focus on something, you're going to head in that direction. Focus on the alternate route. Focus on the goal. So whatever it is you come up across, you will overcome it. And every time you overcome any obstacle, you feel good about yourself. And you know from every obstacle you overcome, you get more and more confident in overcoming it. If you're going through something, reach out to your family and friends. If your family and friends aren't helping you, find other sources to help you overcome those obstacles. Be better, get better, have a better outcome. All too often we look at people when we tell ourselves, oh, they'll be okay, they've been doing it for this long. But they've been doing it for that long without you. Be a positive influence in somebody else's life. Allow people to be a positive influence in your life. At the end of the day, can't nobody make you do anything. And you can't make anybody do anything either. But we can understand we can still be there for one another. And just letting people know, oh, I've been through that. Don't worry yourself about it. I'll help you get through it if you want some information. I'll give it to you so you know what you need to do. There's not much that's going on on this planet that hasn't been done already. You're going through it for the first time and you might feel overwhelmed, but trust and believe there are people who have been through that. There are people who have survived that. And how well do you get to know your purpose in life if you only focus on what you're going through and you never share what's going on with you with anybody else? You'd be surprised how many people have gone through things similar or worse and then you'll start to realize, oh, it's not that bad. Okay. Oh, so I'll be fine. And then you can move on through life and enjoy some struggles because you'll be like, you know what? This is going to make me stronger. Everyone who practices something is going through a struggle. Everybody has it. If your jump shot isn't that great, you got to keep practicing. That's how you get better. That's your struggle. If you play soccer or football, depending on your nationality and where you're at with it, you want to make sure your footwork is on point. You got to make sure you can move and, and have the agility that you want. You got to make sure your stamina is up. That's all things you have to improve on. That's your struggle. If you got health issues, then you got to take the time to look forward and see how you can make those changes before it becomes too serious. That's your struggle. You have a family and you want that family to grow. Listen, all those distractions that we have, it's not worth it. You can go outside and you can realize there are people doing things that might not be too conductive, conducive to the things you want, in which case it's not worth it. Yes, it's okay to have a distraction here and there to get your mind off of things, but 
don't overindulge. Don't abuse the distraction without taking care of what's really going on in your life and in your world. Everyone has a struggle and everybody likes to throw up the highlight reel and go, oh, this is what I got and this is what I'm... But it took them time to get there. Nobody just has it made for them. And even if they do, there's going to be a time when they don't because the person who's just handing them things might not always be there. And you got to have yourself a well-connected network. Some people are fortunate to never experience that. But do you know them? And if you do, why don't you talk to them? Why don't you associate yourself with them? Because if I had a a family member who has a million dollars and I only come to the door with good credit because I paid all my debt off and I have no money left. If me and that person work together, between us, we have a million dollars. So your associations can help you out of a bad situation, but don't be so isolated to yourself where you feel like you can't open up to people or you can't explore the option of finding people and resources and networks that can help you and benefit you. Life isn't meant to be alone. Everyone, Everybody has a story to tell. Everybody wants to be with somebody. Everybody likes affection. Everybody likes the comfort of someone else. You have some people who have pets because they enjoy living things around them that they can interact with. Some people prefer, you know, the opposite sex and friends and family. Everybody wants somebody. We just have to learn how to be able to associate with them and we can grow. Pets are cool, don't get me wrong, but can your pet help you wash the dishes? Can they help you cook? Can they help you clean? It's more like another child because you have to take care of that pet or as well as they may well protect you, but sometimes you need a little bit more. The dishwasher breaks. If you need things fixed around in the house, somebody who's with you can actually fix it or y'all can come together and help it and that's less of a struggle on you. And then you realize no matter what you go through, when you have a strong foundation, family and friends around you, you can overcome anything. And when you start to realize life is short, you don't waste time doing things that's trivial. You want to make the best out of every situation. I personally don't want to waste time doing anything that's not conducive to the lifestyle I want to live. Right? I want to be able to be happier, spend time with family, enjoy the comfort and love of the people that care about me the most. I know the struggle is real, but at the other hand, there's another part of life. And if you only focus on the struggle, then what else is there in your life besides that? And then you can't sleep too well, and then you're overwhelmed, and there's always something, and you become kind of a bitter, cranky person. Who wants that? Nobody wants stress. Nobody wants to focus on the negative all the time. So if you can learn to focus on the positive, build on that, educate yourself, put yourself in certain circles and start with self-maintenance, self-care, self-love, and then build outward. And when you realize you have people around you that genuinely care about you, who want the best for you, you can open up a little bit and then realize some of the things you're going through, you didn't have to go through alone. And when you have those opportunities and you have those moments where you've just overcome an obstacle and here you are feeling good about yourself, that's that's why life is worth living. That's why you should open up and that's why you should talk to people and that's why you should feel good about going through certain things because you know the outcome is going to make you feel good. Yes, I go to work every day or every week and I know when I get that paycheck, I can pay the bills, I can go out to eat, I can go places, I can go on a vacation. I can do things for my family that I couldn't have done before. And sometimes you got to put in more hours. So you deal with it. But you know what the outcome is. If you're an entrepreneur, and that's a very hard thing to be. But when you grind and you grind and you grind and you come out on top, no feeling feels better. And don't take failure as a loss. It's just a lesson in life. This is what went wrong. And you dig a little bit deeper and you talk to people and you figure out what steps you should take. Because you already know what steps you did take that didn't work. And then you can find a better way in another route. But you got to keep those mentors. You got to keep talking to people. You got to open up. You got to make sure you're on the right path and track. And it's okay to take chances. Don't be afraid to fail. Be afraid to not try. Be afraid to not do something. Be afraid of standing still and not moving. Now, it's okay to be patient. And I'm learning to be more patient because I can wait without getting upset and angry. 
and the way I figured that out is have priorities. And when one thing doesn't work out, move on to the next one. And when that don't work out, move on to the next one. Oh, I got to wait on something. Oh, how about I focus on something else while I wait? I just won't sit there and just wait, 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 wait. I can focus on something else. And before you know it, the time flies. And when you do things you enjoy, it's kind of hard to not enjoy and to watch the time fly by. Before you know it, wow, an hour went by and I'm okay. I'm, it's not that bad. So that's how I got to learn patience and not to be obsessive over little small things. Yes, I want things to play out fine, but I plan for things to go wrong. And I'm willing to overcome obstacles in order to still see my goal through. So hopefully y'all found this informative. Um, I want to start to have these deep conversations with you guys. I want these conversations to become um, normal. And believe it or not, um, a lot of the content I've been giving you guys came from a book by a man named Jordan Peterson. He has a book called uh, 12 Rules. And I encourage you guys to read it. Check it out. I've been giving you my thoughts and my spin on it, the way I see it, the way it applies to me. But everybody lives differently. Everybody has a different lifestyle. And... Again, we can take these conversations to a whole nother level and we can share it and we can include the children and we can include our elders and we can figure out how to make things right. And we can come out on top and in a better place than we are today. So if you made it this far, I thank you. Uh, if you want to support this channel, I have Rel's Locker. Um, I have things from mugs. Um mouse pads, hoodies, shirts for men and women. Check it out. Let me know what you guys think. And I thank y'all. I appreciate y'all for making it this far. See you guys later.